Rob. Welcome to episode 75 of the Be Yourself and Love It podcast. So I've been thinking a lot lately about how sometimes we get stuck in life. We get stuck with certain patterns that we might have been trying to change for months, years, maybe our whole adult lives. Um, we get stuck in smaller ways with emotions resulting from issues that might have happened a long time ago. Maybe you're angry at something at somebody for something that they did quite a long time ago and that you feel logically you're like, oh, I wish I could just let go of the anger and move on. But for some reason it troubles you. It keeps on coming in your mind and you ruminate or you just uh, feel like you're stuck with this anger. Uh, you don't know what to do with it. You don't know where to put it. Um, you know, you could be upset still about stuff that happened a long time ago or things come up from the past that, you know, logically you think you had less information or less knowledge or, uh, but you feel guilty about it or ashamed about it or anything. So why do we get stuck? Um, what can we do about stuckness? And I'm not saying that this is the definitive answer or anything like that. None of these things are simple and there's never one simple answer. But one thing that I've often found in my own journey of self-healing and also working with my clients as a therapist is a common reason why people get stuck, especially with emotions, is that they've got an inner conflict going on where, for example, let's take the anger thing. One part of them feels angry and another part of them feels like they really shouldn't be angry and then they've got another part that's uh, frustrated with the impulse, uh, the, the impasse, and a bunch of other parts involved. Maybe a better example is, say, for example, uh, procrastinating over something. They've got some part that's like absolutely determined that they want to do this, that it's really, really, really important, and they can't make themselves do it because they've got another part that see, they don't, people don't usually identify with the part that doesn't want to do it. They usually identify with the part that does want to do it, but they've got another part that is digging its heels and determined not to do it. And then they might have other parts involved, like one that's uh, saying that they're they are an idiot or they're there's something wrong with them. They're a bad person for not doing it. And then on top of that, they've got another part that's saying, oh, well, you know, I shouldn't be so hard on myself because that's not helping. You know, they might have a, a part that's saying that. Uh, they might have a part that's uh, saying that they've got enough time. They can do it, they can do it later. And that uh, they might just have a part that's just frustrated and is just like, this is pointless, right? I'm just going to put the TV or YouTube on. And so what I'm, what this causes uh, is like, to use my own coined phrase, it's emotional congestion. So if you look at it this way, if you've, if you've got a big jar full of golf balls and you want to get a golf ball, so you turn it upside down, you turn the jar upside down and all the golf balls are trying to come out at the same time. None of them can come out. So because they're so conflicted, they can't actually work through the individual strands of the problem one by one. And another metaphor that I came up with to describe this is like, imagine you were a king or a queen or uh, either, uh, both. <laughs> It's 2020, you can be whatever gender you want of ruler. So, um, and you come in to consult your consult, you consult your council of advisors. And what you find when you enter the room is that one of your advisors is like really angry, he's standing up in his seat and he's shouting at someone else. Uh, are you going to go in and are you going to shout as well? which uh, some people might do, like, what are you doing being so angry? Like, this is this is meant to be the king's um, official council meeting. Uh, what, how, how could you behave like that? Or are you going to say, look, what is the problem here, right? Um, what are you so angry about? Let's get really, really clear on, on what you're angry about. Uh, and it's like, maybe if you allow the anger to have its say, and you really, really understand that, uh, advisor, he might sit down and allow you to have a productive meeting for a change. 
Now, just think about it. When your kids are fighting, for example, or when kids are fighting in school, if the teacher is judicious, she'll separate them first so that they can't fight. And then she'll say to one of them, right, you tell me what happened. And if the other one tries to interrupt, she'll say, wait, wait, wait now. You'll get your turn. I'm going to listen to this. Um, he's going to say what he said thinks happened. Then you're going to say what you think happened. And then we're going to sort it out. And not something stupid like, uh, I don't care who started it. I'm going to finish it. That's a bad plan because you're not actually teaching those children how to uh, mediate conflicts be, be, beside um, with one another. You have to mediate the conflict if you want your children to have the skills to mediate conflicts. So uh, I think I've made myself clear. I'm just going to clarify a bit more. What you want to do is have a good look at what's going on inside you uh, so that you can see what the separate strands are, go are going on and you can pay attention to them one by one like you could journal out a part. Um, I like to meditate on what I'm feeling. I don't know if, if it's really meditation, but anyone looking at what I'm doing would think it's meditation because of the way that we use that word in the West. But for me, it's just emotional processing. I lie quietly or sometimes sit, depending on how I'm feeling, and I just feel what I'm feeling for long periods of time. And uh, why would you do this? Well, I, uh, it's a whole podcast in itself, but I love this story, so I think you'll love it too. Ever since I've grown up, there was a tapestry in my parents' living room. And I looked at this for years and years and years. And it wasn't until a few years ago that I was looking at that tapestry. And I saw that in the background, in, in the door, there was a blacksmith in the doorway. I was like, whoa, I've been looking at this for like over two decades. Uh, and I never noticed the blacksmith in the doorway. That's what I get from looking at my emotions, looking at... Uh, what's going on. I often find blacksmiths in doorways that, that were always there. And sometimes it's even weirder than that. Sometimes you're going, oh, right, I've always known that. But it's just on the edge of your awareness. It's just on the edge of your awareness. And by looking at what, really looking at what's going on, you get all sorts of revelations. Sometimes not there and then, actually. Sometimes it's like later on that evening or the next day or the day after that. So some of you aren't really in a position to do that um, kind of emotional processing yet. Like I wasn't able to before I did a lot of therapy and working through things myself. Journaling's good, um, as I mentioned. Ultimately, a lot of people to get this do require experience of having experienced the experience of having parts sort of moved aside and shifted so that you can, really can follow one th strand of discussion and then, um, you know, see what, what the other sides of the story are so you can remove this emotional congestion that you might be suffering from yourself if you're feeling stuck. And once you've experienced that a few times... It becomes easier to do on your own. Personally, I still go to therapy. I get a lot. I I get a lot done a lot more quick when I go and see my therapist than I can do on my own. But I do a lot of it on my own as well. Now, if you would like to have an experience of this kind of thing, if it seems like a time in your life where this might be useful to you, uh, yeah, send me a message on Facebook, Anthony Samroff, or send me an email if you don't use Facebook, Anthony at beyourselfandloveit.com. Uh, tell me just a little bit about what you're experiencing at the moment and maybe we can arrange a consultation together where I can actually give you first-hand experience of what it's like to work through these kinds of emotional blocks and that might help you do it more on your own uh, or you might be so wild that you want to see me for a little bit longer. I don't mind either way. I'm always very busy but I'd love to hear from you if this is uh, something that you think you might use some help with because this is totally center of the bullseye stuff for me i'm really passionate about it until next time be yourself but don't just be yourself be yourself and love it oh and share this